Welcome to episode five of the AI Practitioner Exam Bite series. Let's start by looking at the review question from the last episode as usual, asking us to identify the most appropriate type of machine learning. In this case, the answer is C, unsupervised learning. This is because there are no predefined labels or categories and the goal is to discover inherent patterns or groupings in the data, which is a common unsupervised learning technique. Supervised learning, option A, requires label data, which is not available in this scenario. Reinforcement learning, option C, is used for decision-making processes in interactive environments, which doesn't apply here. And federated learning, D, is a machine learning technique where you train algorithms across multiple decentralized devices holding local data samples, which is not relevant to clustering in this task. Today is an exciting day because we're going to be moving into the second task statement 1.2 in the fundamentals of AI and ML domain, looking at the practical use cases of AI. In particular, in this episode, we're covering the objectives, recognize applications where AI ML can provide value. For example, assist human decision-making, solution scalability, automation. And secondly, determine where AI ML solutions are not appropriate. For example, cost benefit analysis, situations where a specific outcome is needed instead of a prediction. First up, let's talk about some examples of applications where AI and ML shines. Assisting human decision-making, AI can analyze vast amounts of data and provide insights faster than humans, supporting better informed decisions in fields like healthcare diagnostics or financial risk assessment. Enhancing solution scalability. AI systems can handle increasing workloads efficiently. Think of chatbots that can handle or assist thousands of customers simultaneously. Automation. AI excels at automating repetitive tasks. For example, in manufacturing, AI-powered robots can perform precise repetitive actions tirelessly with consistency. Looking at pattern recognition. AI can identify complex patterns in data, making it valuable in fraud detection or predictive maintenance. So we've covered some areas where AI and ML can be really useful, but let's look at the flip side now where AI and ML might not be the best choice. We first need to consider kind of cost benefits. I mean, if the cost of implementing and maintaining an AI system outweighs the potential benefits, then it's probably not really a good fit. So you always wanna do a thorough cost benefit analysis. We also talked about when specific outcomes are needed. I mean, if you need a definite explainable result rather than a prediction or probability, AI might not be suitable. For instance, in a critical safety system where every decision must be 100% certain and traceable. Also, what happens if there's limited data to train your AI models? Because AI systems need large amounts of quality data to train effectively. If you don't have sufficient data, AI might not be the right solution. You may not even be able to train an AI model. Let's also talk about ethical concerns. I mean, in situations where AI decisions could lead to bias or unfair treatment, human judgment might be more appropriate. And to finish things off, regulatory restrictions. Some industries have strict regulations that may limit or prohibit the use of AI for certain applications. So remember, the key is to understand both the potential and limitations of AI and ML. As an AI practitioner, you need to recognize where AI can add value and where traditional methods might be more suitable. Let's do a review question before we wrap up this episode. A large multinational corporation is looking to improve its operations across various departments. In which of the following scenarios would an AI ML solution likely provide the most value? Is it A, calculating employees' exact salaries based on hours worked and pay rate? B, maintaining an alphabetical list of employee names and contact information? C, assigning parking spaces to employees based on a predefined seniority system? Or D, detecting potential fraudulent transactions in real time across millions of daily financial operations. We'll review this question in our next episode, and I'll see you then.